So a very warm welcome to my Ikebana family on this beautiful morning. It is said that a good teacher is a great influence on our lives. She encourages our minds to think, our hands to create, and our hearts to love. In the words of Franklin Benjamin, you tell me and I forget. You teach me, I remember. And you involve me and I learn. Today, Delhi Ikebana International has a very involving learning experience for all of us. We have performing for us today, Katrina Seahorse from Brussels. Katrina is a second grade Jonin Sanyo degree holder. She's an Ikebana artist of great talent who takes online classes. Her works have appeared in various Ikebana books. Katrina is a close associate of Delhi Ikebana International and has performed for us live in person in Delhi. I'd also like to take up this opportunity to welcome the Ikebana International President of Tokyo Headquarters, Miho Okawara, and <coughs> Madam Chikage Suzuki, wife of the Ambassador of Japan to India. I now like to request Madam Chikage to say a few words before our demonstration begins. Thank you. Okay. Namaskar, Madam Ji. Aap kese hain? Thank you, Delhi Kebana International, for inviting me to the demonstration by Meet Ekaterina Shithouse. During this pandemic, I have many chances to see online Kebana demonstrations. Thanks to the modern technology, demonstrations all over the world. I've enjoyed seeing various style of Ikebana and wide range of ideas. I've found it fresh and very stimulating. At first, I did image training in my head, but now I started doing my own arrangements encouraged by beautiful Ikebana around the world. Today, I'm looking forward to seeing Ekaterina Sands at works. Danyoad. All right, so I hope you can see me. Can you see me well? Thank you. I uh, appreciate the welcoming words of Madame Suzuki. Thank you very much. And welcome everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Um, thank you for uh, Madame Miko Kavara uh, being here from Sogetsu uh, board, so uh, from our headquarters from our school. And um, the Ikebana International uh, Organization, uh, thank you for welcoming me here. So I am um, pleased to start with an arrangement that uh, my teacher, Atsuka Bersma, who is uh, um, an absolutely wonderful teacher, and I'm very lucky to be uh, studying with her. She has uh, inspired and challenged us to do this arrangement. Uh, what she asked uh, for us to make is intertwining of branches and leaves. And this is not a traditional way of um, working with intertwined material, right? So we normally intertwine leaves between themselves and having it done with branches, that is something I found uh, very interesting. So what I have selected for this arrangement is a curly willow branch that allows me to have the branch material nicely curved. And this way I can have the whole intertwining done more naturally. So um, I'm sure there are many different ways to do it. I just want to share with you what I am coming up with. And if you have any other thoughts or if you have shared the start, uh, have done something similar yourself, I'd be quite interested to see because really intertwining theme is very popular in Sogetsu school, maybe in other schools not so much, but um, for us it is an important and interesting way of looking at the material 
and finding yet another way of doing the same uh, kind of the same the same method of manipulating I uh, appreciate very much so I will use just a little bit of wire to fix it and in some school that is allowed I know there are schools which are not looking very positively using um, artificial materials in the fixation um, I've been to a few workshops through the Kibana International Organization with the Ichoya school for example and I learned that using a wire would not be something that you would uh, guys typically do. So I have created my base for intertwining and then I will take the leaves again a material is strictly selected for the purpose right so I have to have something long and very flexible and this way I can intertwine and I can show this um, wonderful connection between the material of the basket and weaving or intertwining in the arrangement itself. And the basket is actually something very new for me. You know, many of you are watching my um, presentations in, um, on Facebook or on Instagram. And I use a lot of different vases all the time, but uh, many of my vases you already know well because I've used them before. So it was a challenge for me to come up with enough new vases to make sure that what I'm doing for you today is uh, completely new and it's not repeating um, vases which I had in the past. So this basket I have recently acquired again through my teacher. Um, it's a set of uh, Japanese baskets, I believe it's um, bamboo. And for me, uh, that was a dream really to get a hold of a real Japanese bamboo basket. So now I have, um, I'm enjoying it and I have some baskets already placed at clients because I do Ikebana as my occupation. It was not the case uh, before I studied, I had um, job and like corporate job and uh, nothing to do with art but after studying with my teacher i decided that i will take it upon myself to see if ikibana can be an occupation and my theory is that this way we can attract more young people to ikibana so it's not only the hobbyist who would do it but also people who want to have flowers as their profession so i am working for clients i am decorating events and of course I'm teaching as well. So that is what uh, drives me. I um, like to share my love for Ikebana. I do weekly Facebook demonstrations. And as I said, already probably fourth year, I think. I should check it, but uh, fourth or fifth year. Uh, so I've restarted just recently. So, so this would be my base and I would look for the side which is more interesting and uh, find the, the angle at which intertwining looks the most um, impressive. So I am adding a little bit of element here because the uh, leaves which are traveling up, they also need to be incorporated. And the intertwining in my view doesn't have to be everywhere and done the same way or same intensity. So if you are showing just a part of it being intertwined, I think that's all perfectly fine and it conveys the idea. So I have um, an intertwined element here and there, and then I can just add a flower. I have a wonderful orchid here that is going to complement the arrangement. And basically the, the idea is to show the beauty of the basket and how combining it with the intertwined material can showcase the, um, the texture of the basket itself. So another basket I got is quite large one. And I was very much interested to work with a larger size basket. The only problem with baskets is that inside uh, you would have to have something 
for holding water. And here the bottom would not be as strong to actually push and to cancel large branches. So what I did in advance, I have used my hammer, so like real tool, uh, to put a sturdy branch, still with a bit of uh, foliage on it, into the canson, and then I can fix other branches next to it. So in the book five of Sogetsu, so those who are from Sogetsu school, they know, there is a fixation with supporting branches for the larger, more like, um, uh, the, the thicker branches. So you would hammer smaller ones into the cans and then fix them together. So this is what I'm going to do now. I have selection of autumn branches. Um, they are all with berries. So I really want to show that flowers are not the one and only um, subject of Ikebana. Branches are as important and berries are probably sometimes even more festive than the branches, or the, even than the flowers. So I want to incorporate the handle of the basket into the arrangement, as it is a quite um, interesting line. And look at this color. This is so beautiful. This is so bright. And indeed, when I apply pressure to, um, to the Kenzan, I'm risking to break the whole basket, so what I will need to do, I will need to use the standing um, element to actually have my branches securely fixed. And I really want to maintain nice angles, like really um, far reaching, and that's why I will need several branches to balance it off, because now we all who, who practice Ikebana for a while, we know that the branches are not uh, very light. So once we have a larger branch, now we have several of them coming together. Just a second. So I have to hold one with the hands. No assistance, so sorry, bear with me. With the real life presentations, it's always easier because you have an assistant to help you. When I was uh, working in Delhi, uh, the chapter of Ikebana International kindly provided their uh, members to uh, help me out and that was of course much easier. So you have two, three people working with you constantly and you can have all the support you need while you're presenting, while online presentations are somewhat less convenient in the respect of not having a team. So let me uh, get back to the process. So I'm afraid we'll have to repeat the uh, hammer fixing, which I wanted to avoid the noise during the presentation, but as I didn't manage to do it a single person operation, so I'll have to fix this again. And probably it's for the best time you can see the whole process maybe for the other schools which are not using heavy tools in the Kibana, that would be interesting. So what I will do is a little bit of incision here just to make sure I have better chances of inserting into Kenzan and then sorry for the noise. So then I have my uh, fixation done. Let me try to fix it outside so we avoid the accident again. And the fire thorn uh, branch is very, very hard wood. It is um, almost like uh, iron to me. So really uh, making incisions is another way to help in my experience with fixing it. So, and uh, see the difference outside of the vase where it's all, you know, on the basket, it's all wobbly. Here it's even standing by itself in the same cantilever position. So I will put it back into the basket just after fixation to the big branches, of the big branches is done. And I will finish it off inside of the basket. So, so far I didn't even use the wire. So as always circular movements and down. So, but it's nice that 
uh, here it is a circle of quite experienced people. Um, when I'm making my Facebook presentations, uh, recently I asked people to rate themselves as like on their experience in Ikebana. So it was maybe half of the people who were teachers, but still it was a lot of uh, those who just started the Ikebana journey and they are joining me and I'm hoping that I will manage to show Ikebana in such a light that it will make them want to try. And basically that's, that's the reason I'm doing those presentations to get people interested, to get people involved with the Kibana. So here I have quite intense orange. At the other side is blueberries. I have um, taken some foliage off, but not a lot. So what I need is still getting Uh, getting the foliage removed. And what I want to show here is three, or well, maybe even four, yeah, I have four different kinds of berries. So the pink one, the orange, and the blue. And the colors are probably not the ones that you immediately would think of putting together, but I believe that showing the branches the way they are in nature, and they are combined like this in nature, they're quite uh, often those, um, colors are uh, not necessarily matched the way we think, you know, according to the color circle or to whatever color theory we're using. Sometimes in nature you find color combinations that are probably clashing. And um, right now it is interesting for me to explore those dimensions as well. Because the traditional uh, one color tone or maybe contrasting colors um, variations I've done a lot, I've done enough, and now I am looking for unusual combinations and looking how they are combined together and how they can actually work together. So what I also wanted to add here to this quite large and um, widespread arrangement, I wanted to add flowers that would uh, complement it and bring out this character. But it's not so easy to find a flower that will actually convey this feeling with a, that I want to have in the arrangement. So I was doubting for a while between uh, different kinds. And I've selected um, something very, very subtle. So it's a uh, set on flower song I'm from behind um, presenting this. This is not really, it's a succulent, uh, succulent and then it is uh, not really looking like a flower a lot. And that helps me keep attention on, it's like a inflorescences of small uh, pinkish flowers. And that helps me keep an attention on my main focus and focus of this arrangement being the berries. So if I would put like massive lilies in front, the attention will go to those lilies and that's not what I'm after. So I am going to use a more subtle flower and I put it relatively low just to create this right mass, right um, depth of the arrangement because what we often see is that arrangement with large, large branches, they require this very strong stable base and having it filled with, um, how would you say, material that gives impression of um, volume, of uh, stability. That's something which I think is uh, an important part. So here as I'm going with the pink, and pink actually goes nicely with this middle pink branch. I think it is quite a pleasant, combination. So I am making it a little more populated, a little bit more natural because if you have such a large movement on top, in my view, you need to have a large base to support this movement. Otherwise it is as if it's standing on, you know, on thin legs, something quite heavy on top. To me, that's not really working well. 
So what I want to do is to really have this nice big center that can sustain the movement of this of this composition. So um, I see that sometimes there are comments passing through. I thought I would be reading them, but I think it's uh, better that I either leave them for the end or if the administrator or whoever is monitoring the comments, if they are related to the arrangement as it is now, um, that would be good if, if somebody can read them out to me and I'm happy to respond. In the meantime, I will a little bit trim the lips here. I still feel it is a bit too much for, for the size of the arrangement. And in my uh, Wednesday presentations, what I typically do, I try to go the whole way from taking the branch the way it is in nature and trimming it to what I find appropriate or beautiful for that arrangement. So here we have a challenge normally I do in the 45 half an hour time, I have two maximum three arrangements. So I've been asked here to make five arrangements. So we will spend a little less time on this, but I think this discovery is an important part of Ikebana and making the decisions of what material you choose and what you don't, that's also um, an important consideration. So it is a relatively large branch, so you can see it's going nicely forward. And I will uh, still work on this side to unite it with the arrangement. There are smaller branches with the same kind of berries which I want to build. I prefer to group materials in an arrangement and don't spread all over the um, Ikebana the same kind of variety of things. So in nature, if you think of it, if something grows together, um, if it's like a, let's say, group of plants, um, they most probably will be growing on one side of a field or in one location and there will be other plants dominating some other areas because the sun comes in a certain way, the water comes in a certain way. So it is actually very much in line with what nature offers us to have materials grouped by like similarity or by the same kind. And often I try to make it look like it's the same plant that have been growing. Um, together. So even if with students we remove branches, uh, they remove partly leaves and often the beginners especially they feel so bad cutting off a flower and we can always add the flower back once we are certain that this is the right location for it and uh, the way they grow naturally is not always the optimal way for Ikebana. So I think this would be the finished arrangement. So it is actually a basket which can be put um, somewhere in the middle and I would incorporate the handle. Probably I need to think through where exactly it's going to go but uh, somewhere connected to the branches and, and it's called fire thorn, this orange berry uh, for a reason because it has huge thorns so um, fairly dangerous plant and I am just looking for a bright thorn to hold my handle. Right, so I found it. So something like that would be, in my view, what you put in a proper Japanese basket. So my interpretation of a Japanese basket uh, arrangement with uh, branches, uh, berry, berry bearing branches. So an autumn theme really. So let me take it away. And now I want to do something completely different. So um, what So Get to School is known for is our attitude towards the unconventional material. Um, so we use anything really, whatever household item, uh, it can be appropriate for Kibana. And uh, during the lockdown, many countries are still in lockdown, some are going back into lockdown. 
what we encourage people to do is to work with the material they can find in their households. So the material would be um, paper material, uh, plastic materials, anything really that would, um, yeah, would be readily available and easy to find. So one of the materials I really like using is um, plastic straws. Unfortunately, in Europe, they are forbidden. And <laughs> honestly, the more they become forbidden, the more interesting they are. Isn't that how it works? So uh, I have a few of them left from um, the time before. And I have a little bit prepared small structures, uh, but I will show you what I want to do with it. So it is an arrangement that I will place on a stand. And a stand is a very versatile way of um, securing your Ikebana. I want to use the fact that those materials, they are very, very light and they actually hold water. So what you can do, you can attach them to each other in various groups. And then you can seal some of them off in order to hold water. So if I now put a um, glue gun into one of the, like it's hot glue, into one of the straws, I will get a watertight straw. And that will allow me to have um, basically a water tube inside. I can of course add the tubes as well. But uh, I will do in this arrangement a little bit of both. So there is already one sealed tube built into this. And I will add some more. So the basic fixing happens very quick. You just allow several straws to be attached together. So this is what I do. And that becomes a bit like, um, you know, Northern Lights. So they're all a bit different length. And you can grow this construction as large as you want. So I have groups which were fixed to each other and now I'm just adding them together. Uh, if I want to mix some other colors, yeah, the only downside is the glue sticks to your hands. Um, if you want to add other colors, you can. I have a little bit of neon orange and I know which flowers I want to put into it. And that allows me to kind of play with the colors already when I am assembling the arrangement, or the, the base for the arrangement, let's say. Um, this type of work is really more of a sculpture and it resembles more like the contemporary art. Um, if I decorate like for children's birthday, for example, this could be a nice way of making centerpieces um, they are light, they are playful. Um, if it's like a girl, female child, this is an interesting and easy way to add some whimsical touch to, to the celebration, not necessarily making it, you know, like a wedding looking table pieces with a lot of flowers and, or how they often say here, don't make me funeral flowers on my wedding, right? So, it was a lot of overloading um, with Western style arrangement um, flowers. You can avoid that. You can just go for, for your funny collection of drinking straws and have them attached. So you see how it's growing. Uh, it is quite easy, uh, not complicated at all. You can even do it with your children and that I will always encourage to, especially people in the lockdown situation, you want to have the um, possibility to connect with children over some activities. So this could be a fun activity. There is no really big Ikebana rule about it. You can just have a little freestyle expression done by the children and for the children. So I can imagine a girl making it herself and inviting friends and being proud. I think that would be a quite nice approach to um, teaching a little girl to express herself and 
work with flowers and appreciate nature. So I'll keep I'll leave it here. Uh, you get the uh, you get the idea. You can build it as as wide as you want to. I will attach one of the water tubes at the back, and I will use one of the sealed ones. So the sealing of the water tube. I'll show you one just in case it was not very clear and I don't know if there was a question about it. So you just take your hot glue and you put it inside. So you just squeeze it inside of this. Uh, it has to be sufficient quality to, uh, quantity to seal off the end. But once it's sealed, it is really watertight. It will stay like that. So that would be a potential water tube as well. So I can attach it here first. So now I'm just gluing the real water tube behind. And because it's the same color, it kind of even fits, but you can cover it with several layers of of um, plastic uh, sticks and then it will all be possible to uh, see from all sides. Right. So and there was one already sealed here. So I'm going to use that one as well. So what do you think of this type of arrangements? Is that going too far for you or is that something you are okay to use? And uh, as I heard it's an interactive session, so feel free to uh, express your opinion. So I'm just taking a little bit of Australia flowers. And once they go in, it's um, adding this light and really touch to the arrangement. So, side. And you can add, of course, a little branch. That would be even prettier. I have uh, Japanese maple here. Not overloaded, a little bit less of leaves. Just something to, to add the movement. So this way it's, you know, it's a very, very light, very easy uh, composition, but gives you some ideas of what you can do and how you can explore different kinds of materials. So, now back to the normal Ikebana arrangement. Take off the glue here. So, um, here what I want to uh, look at is a large surface of water. So, I hope you can see the container. It's again a newest container I have, and it's a ceramic vase, very large, and I always end with people who have those uh, Japanese uh, wooden lacquer vases, which are very large surface, and you can combine them, put together, so you can have like a pond of water on the surface of your uh, table or at the exhibition, and that I find really, really interesting. Um, Nevertheless, I think this is exciting enough, or large enough, because what I want to work with is showing the surface of leaves. And the way I want to do it is try to, I don't want to shy away from broken leaf surfaces. And we all, you know, those who are around Japanese culture for a while, we have heard about the wabi-sabi concept. And we find it intriguing, to be honest. I think in the West is not so known. It's much more consumerist type of uh, attitude. While the whole wabi-sabi idea is like appreciation of the age of the objects. 
So something which was there for a longer time. And, and we had uh, recently a kind of a discussion or like a, I don't know, exploration, I should say, with one of the uh, Japanese artists, Ikebana artists on, on uh, Instagram. Uh, he published a book about Wabi Sabi and I was trying to understand, like, do we Westerners understand um, the concept correctly? Because really, I mean, in a way, yes, I am living in Western Europe, but I'm Russian. So what I learned is the culture which is between really East and West. It is, um, we understand both. I think that's kind of what we uh, are destined to do in the world. We unite the two. I was trying to go over it and uh, see if my understanding of, of this is correct because what I hear, what I see people you know, writing about it is that um, uh, it's Im about impermanence of beauty, right? Beauty of imper imperfection. Um, and what this gentleman has added to it, I thought was very pro profound. Um, he said, to him, it means, and it, he is Japanese, so he's supposed to understand it better than me. Um, he said to him, it means that beauty was here, but it's no longer there, and it was replaced by something else. And he said that the mission of his life is to find out what this is that replaces the beauty. And when I'm saying this, I really get like geese skin all over because I think it's such a profound concept. Um, and then I discussed it with my student in uh, Bahrain. And actually, yes, I, I do give online lessons and people are from all over the world are now studying with me and uh, she said that and she originally comes from Pakistan and she said in, in their language in Urdu there is an expression you can tell the beauty of the castle by the ruins of it and I think it is in a way I mean it, it has some it resonates with me and gives some um, similarity to this Fabi Sabi understanding which uh, I just learned so I think showing this imperfection is really what makes you think of passing of time, of having life, um, not taking life for granted. And therefore I like using the materials which are naturally already transformed by an insect or by um, you know, some circumstances of their, how they were growing so that I am appreciative of time, appreciative of what had happened to them before, and that I, in turn, in my life, can see the today as just a part of life, so not necessarily as the end, of, uh, end result. So the today will be uh, uh, defining what my, uh, what I'm going to be like, what I'm going to look like, what I'm going to feel like once the today is becoming yesterday. So, and I think that to me is a very important part of uh, Ikiwana practice. And therefore I wanted to make this wave out of the hosta leaves. And hosta is notorious for being damaged by insects. Um, that's what happens to it in my garden every year. And I was, before I was quite upset about it because I wanted to have nice, perfect leaves. And some of them are, like you can see that some are really like not touched at all, but the others are clearly experiencing <laughs> um, some interaction with snails, I believe. It's snails or, I don't know who else is eating them, but uh, very intensely, so. This way I can respect the way the leaves turned out and I can respect the other creators who were working in it before I got to touch uh, this, this plant. So I will add just one lily. Um, to me, it's a little bit feeling of the water lily pond. If you have a lily, although it's not a water lily and it's, you know, they're not ever getting any water plants here. So the only time I could see 
the lotus was in India on the market. So I was really grateful for the ladies who took me shopping for flowers, both in uh, Delhi in and Mumbai. I got to see the wonderful flower, uh, flower market. Totally different from what we have here. Um, but nevertheless, the experience was great. Unfortunately, a lot of material was coming from Holland, meaning <laughs> it's quite familiar to me. Uh, but uh, what I liked is that you can also see the local uh, flowers, the local people who go in the morning pick those flowers and they just, you know, sitting there on the ground and selling them. It was so authentic, so pure. I, I really enjoyed uh, being there and kind of seeing the real life. Uh, so that is my wave. So I, the um, three-dimensional pebble, oh my, it's heavy. So is that it is going a little bit down in the middle so you can have the feeling of the wave actually passing, passing you by. I'll put it just over here. And let me move to my last arrangement. It is going to be a slightly larger one. And I am going to see how it's going to fit into the camera frame. It might be a little challenging, but bear with me. Um, the arrangement um, is going back to being very, very natural. What I have here is this wonderful material. It is um, um, bark of, uh, what is it called? Cork oak. So it's the oak growing in south of France. Uh, and this is actually used for the cork which you have in wine bottles. So this is actual cork. I'm just wondering if I could move a bit so you get a bit more impression of what's going on here. Um, but uh, what I want to do here, because it's, it's laying flat, to me it's not having enough movement. So I'm just using the base which looks a bit like a stone so that I can have it lifted up and have a this movement going up as well. So for me, having the movement in the arrangement, it's everything. It really makes a difference. This is what defines the Kibana. This is what makes the Kibana special to me and important to me. So I will use that. Um, I will hide some smaller vases behind with Kenzans so that I can place my material. And the idea is probably I will turn it a little more to have more like forward movements. I'm not sure if camera conveys it well. This is really about moving forward towards the viewer. So this way, uh -huh, and I can fit in the camera better. So this way I can nicely hide all my containers underneath and behind and then have my material going from behind. And the type of the arrangement I want to build here is um, what I believe is called uh, mazizashi. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so the way it is explained in the Sobetsu books, it is five kinds of material or more, which I think is a very simplistic way of looking at it because we are talking about um, conveying the feeling of nature, conveying the lightness. Also, we're talking about um, criteria like the wind can go through, the light can go through. I think it's very romantic and also sounds to me like very uh, poetic. Uh, but still, we want to preserve the feeling of richness of nature. So how do you combine the two? Have it light, but at the same time, um, intense enough to have the um, have this connection to to have this strength of nature. So this is where I am going to um, look for the balance. So I have definitely more than five kinds of material uh, with grasses. You know there is always a trick how to fix them in Kansans. Sometimes I bind them with green tape. Sometimes I just 
find the enzymes which are made for grass. It was a nice discovery for me in the recent years that there are enzymes which are a bit um, more dense. And I discovered even there are enzymes which are more dense on the middle and more uh, having more space between the needles on the outside, closer to the perimeter of the, of the cancer. So I thought that was fantastic, but it's not like you can find them so, so easily here. I work with a few Kenzan suppliers now and I'm very happy that I can get what I need, but with transport becoming now quite restricted with all the Corona situation, that becomes a difficulty as well. So I'm looking for the right placement for this uh, quite tall grass. So I think I want to go with the strong side of the arrangement being uh, on here and the lighter side going that way. And unfortunately in the camera, it cuts off the front. So I'm just trying to figure out how to show you the best way. Maybe I need to turn it a little. Eventually, so I will. Um, ah, maybe I go more to the right, or my right. And yes, if somebody sees the uh, Japanese characters on the wall and says that it's wrong direction, it's because the camera actually flips the right and left. So it is in the right direction. Those are the um, characters uh, which are my teacher's name and my teacher made this calligraphy for me so I am very grateful and proud to to have it on my wall and this is actually my studio where I give lessons and where I make um, client work as well and now it's more client work and online lessons uh, I have cancelled my live lessons for now like live in sense of people coming to the studio just for the safety reason. So this will be the last arrangement. I will keep it here. I don't think I would be able to move it. Uh, this is something which you normally do at the end of the presentation. And last time when we were doing in Delhi, we also actually used quite large wooden structures. Uh, that was so much fun. And that's the arrangement which we kept in place at the end of the demonstration. So, well, I want to put my color in the composition. I got some solidago here. Don't want to have all the leaves because that will make it too intense, too um, heavy. I'll remove some of them. I don't know how you feel about removing leaves, but for me, this is one of the key ways of making it, sharing your impression, let's say. You are showing to the viewer what you have seen by adding this, this extra touch. So your imagination or your, how you are seeing the uh, the intensity of the material by taking off leaves or leaving them on uh, that's to me uh, making a completely different impression. So I'm going for a slightly different uh, kind of cross here and again I am following the same principle like I did with the arrangement where there are berries because I want to have materials growing like in nature they would have been grown so they would have been certain kinds of grasses growing together with their own kind. And they are not mixing much. They would have their own territory. So here I want to have territory of this grass now. So. And once I remove this green material from here, you can see there is quite some movement coming from this cross. So it is going to the front with the arrangement. And probably I'll try to post some videos of how the arrangements look like once it's finished because it is indeed not uh, completely possible to have, to see the full three-dimensional character of the arrangement on the video. 
online does have its limitations, although it is performing much better than I would expect it, to be honest. The fact that life moved, life moved into online, I would have thought it will be more difficult, more um, feeling more artificial. I surprised, surprisingly found for myself that I didn't have a problem of, like when I communicate with people, I don't feel that the communication is artificial or unnatural. So I very quickly switched to feeling like that's the person and I'm talking to that person. But some things, of course, you have to pay, make more effort to see them in their true light or in their true shape. So that's indeed what you have to learn. And fortunately, I have started teaching online uh, a couple of years ago because a student asked me to. <laughs> I was very reluctantly agreeing that she couldn't find a teacher locally, so I did it for her. Uh, but thanks to that, I have learned how to do it, what are the techniques, what you should not do. And when the corona came, I was able to show, to um, offer to my students the alternative. And, you know, many of the students are in the risk group, so, you know, like age-wise and health-wise. So I thought that was a great way of supporting them and giving them this opportunity to connect to the beauty and keep the Kibana practice and move forward and feel like, feel some normality to the life. I think that is, that is quite important. So again, I'm removing a lot of foliage and this is material number one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and still I do not feel like this is too much variety because those are natural herbs, grasses, flowers uh, that would combine in a similar way, similar combination in nature. And I'm just recreating it in the Ikebana way and looking for the way of making them be happy uh, with their place. Looking for a little bit of pink. So it's really more the contrast color, uh, contrasting colors arrangement where I have lots of yellows and lots of this violet pink type of color. Um, to me, that gives a nice impression, nice variety. And makes more alive and we have this huge piece of wood that needs to be lightened up in a natural way and I think uh, this is a perfect way of bringing out this natural character of, of this as a you know as a container if you wish. And if you look closely at natural material some very common woods like this one are absolutely wonderful they have seeds, they have flowers, they have, you know, it's, it's green on green, it's not a fancy uh, colorful flower, but if you look at the texture of it, I absolutely adore it. And it is also a very strong stem, you can rely on it and it will give you volume, it will give you texture, it will help you communicate this natural feeling of the arrangement. So, but I'm uh, just finishing it off. Uh, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to hear. I'm a little bit running over the time limit we set, but I hope that's fine with you. I did not realize that I was having so much fun arranging it. So. So this is the uh, finished arrangement, five or more materials. Make it a little bit here. here. 
So I hope you uh, liked it. Uh, let me know if there are any questions. Um, I'm here, happy to answer. I just start to see what is the name. Right. Katrina, so, we cannot thank you enough for the beautiful, beautiful, mesmerizing demonstration. What I think we've all loved out of it is the balance, the technique, the explanation, the way you have tried to kind of teach all of us how we should balance the big and the small and the heavy and the light and the way we should go about our flowers. I'm sure we've all learned so much. You did say that today becomes yesterday, but I think with your arrangements, the memory is going to stay in our hearts for a very long time and they're going to inspire us actually to do Ikebana even better. Thank you so very much. And your structural design, I think was really nice. You know, it was the first time when I think a lot of us have actually seen it happen in front. Um, you know, you kind of just see the picture of it already being created, but to see it get, uh, come in step by step is a totally different thing. And your each arrangement has been better than the other. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you all attendees and uh, until next time. Yes. God bless us all. Thank you.